The Jesuit Center for Theological Reflection, JCTR, is a research, education, and advocacy faith-based organization. Its work is aimed at promoting study and action on issues linking the Christian faith and social justice in Zambia. JCTR is implementing a project called Child Rights Governance. The aim of the project is to advocate for increased public investment in children through increased budget allocations towards health, education, and social protection. To achieve that, JCTR conducts capacity building trainings for communities and children so that they can be able to participate in all the processes of the national budget. In March this year, JCTR conducted a budget analysis and tracking with children in communities of Lufuanyama and Kitwe in which children noted a number of issues. JCTR believes in incorporating children in national issues. That is why today we have a program dedicated to children to share their findings of the national budget analysis that they conducted in March this year. In studio, we have pupils from Lufuanyama and Kitwe, as well as a government official from the DEBS office. Let me welcome Madiana Kambanji. She is from Lufuanyama, a pupil. Welcome to this program. Thank you. We also have Priscovia Kasaji seated next to her. Welcome to this program as well. Thank you. And I'm going to have a bias towards a pupil because we're going to skip uh, Mr. Sikwese, who is a government official. And this is Alex Kunda, also from Lufuanyama. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Sitting next to Alex is Pauline Kapata. Pauline is from right here in Quito. Welcome to the program as well. Thank you so much. And like I earlier mentioned, we have a government official, and this is Mr. Shadrick Sikwese, the Quito District Guidance and Counseling Coordinator. Sir, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Okay, so these are the people that will delve into what happened according to the plannings that JCTR put up to ensure children actively participate in national issues. My first question to all of you, I'll begin with you, Madiana. Why focus on the national budget? Okay, it's more of like an overall thing that we should really put to note. What is a budget? Well, a budget, it's, it's more of like a very important document that really emphasizes on how money will be raised and how it will be spent. So it's really enhanceful for us to look into it and know how it will really affect us. Same question to you, Priscovia. What's your take? Okay, thank you. So I'll start with uh, talking about the budgets, which is a very important document, which shows the country's revenue on how it will be raised and spent. So as children, why focusing on the national budget is that uh, when the government is planning, mostly when they are planning for the national budgets, they forgot about us children, as they forgot to invest more in the kids that support our well-being which is education sector and health sector in social protection so this is why we focus as children we focus on the budgeting alex the girls have said it all what's your take on the importance to focus on the national budget and where you children get involved uh, the reason why we are interested in uh, the national budget it's that uh, the country itself or oh, the government it does not really fulfill most of its promises to us. So uh, this uh, same thing is affecting our country's economy. Let's have uh, a view from uh, Pauline, who is also part of this uh, panel. Pauline, what's your take on the focus on the national budget? Um, OK, as well defined by my fellow colleague, a budget is a plan on how to raise and spend money. So specifically here, we are talking about the national budget. Um, when we talk of the national budget, uh, this is where now people from different stakeholders will come up with plans on what they want in their communities. So we also want the government to involve us in making those uh, decisions because the decisions that they make do not only affect them, but they also affect us as children. Mr. Sikwese, the children have been speaking and I want you to put on the spot. When you hear these children talk, what comes to your mind? These are brilliant minds we're talking about. Uh, exactly. Uh, it's very interesting to hear them talk like this. Uh, it's a national budget. And so as long as uh, one is a citizen of this great nation, then they are supposed to have a share from that budget. So it's good that they can speak out 
so that their concerns are addressed. So, for the sake of our viewers who may not really know what the budget analysis and tracking process was all about, I'd like to still stay with you, Mr. Sequese, just to share when this happened and why JCTR facilitated this. Okay, uh, the budget tracking analysis was done in, in March, and uh, the sole uh, reason why that initiative had to come in and involve our, our, our learners, our children uh, in our schools is basically to understand uh, their concerns, their, uh, uh, the, the issues that they are uh, affecting them, so that they can be voiced out, so that they can be addressed uh, and given maximum attention that they, they really need. So it was uh, a, a, a very good moment for not just the, 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 the learners that were invited, but uh, it's a representation of all the children out there in this nation. So it was a good move, and I'm sure we'll be able to hear from them exactly some of the issues that they raised that need to be addressed in the national budget. Let's get to that. I, I want us now to go into the key findings of the budget tracking and analysis. Let's begin with you, Marjania, especially when you look at issues of education, the education sector. Well, I would really want to commend the government for where has, we call, there is this section called early childhood, early childhood education. Where has the government in last year's budgetary disbursement, it allocated enough money to the early childhood education, but no ECE teachers were allocated to the, to the remoted primary schools. Priscovia, I know you've been listening attentively and you're itching to say something because when you educate a girl child, so we say, you educate the nation. Okay, so <clears throat> when we talk about the key findings on education, we found that the funds that were allocated on education last year, the, the, the schools didn't receive enough funds. So as we talk about the adult literacy, the funds were there, but the schools did not receive anything from that program. Alex, you, would you like to pitch in on uh, education as we talk uh, some of the findings that you found uh, during the budget tracking and analysis? Uh, due to different factors, we found out that uh, some, of the, some of the sectors, like the same sector that we are talking about right now, uh, such, uh, which is known as the education sector, did not receive some of the allocation funds and uh, due to that um Pauline help your brother out yes, and yeah. give us your idea on what really interested you to to these findings especially when you talk about the education sector when you are doing your budget uh, tracking and analysis okay so when we talk of the, the education sector What's really interested me is uh, when it came to the challenged. Uh, we did a budget analysis on the challenged and uh, we noted that um, most people who are challenged do not have uh, uh, access to education like the way we do. Uh, let's say for instance, we have uh, a school here in Kitwe known as Lukasu. So it only runs from grade one to grade seven and once uh, someone graduates from grade 7 going into grade 8, they have to move to Chiwote, which is a very long distance. So hence, we would love it and we would appreciate if the government uh, had, will build more infrastructure for those who are challenged. And by challenged, I am sure you are referring to children with special needs or those that have uh, physical challenges. Mr. Sikwese, Sikwese, the children are speaking out on these very important issues with regard to the education sector. How, what, what, what do you make of this before we go any further? Um, uh, this is great to hear them, like I said, speak like this. Um, um, I've taken note of the three main issues that have come up uh, as far as education is concerned. But I want to highlight... Uh, on the, let me start with maybe the part of uh, inclusive uh, learning for our friends with special needs. I think this clearly came out, and this is one thing I think is being addressed because 
as education, we are running with a motto that we are not leaving anyone behind. So that's uh, a policy, and government is really uh, uh, working hard to make sure that that is taken care of because we don't want to leave anyone behind. So even the issue of uh, uh, Lukasu, uh, the office has received uh, that report and is very much aware of that. And definitely things are underway to ensure that if possible, we can have a boarding school that will be able to accommodate our learners coming from as far as um, Chamboli and all the areas across Kitwe. Because in Kitwe, we don't have a boarding school for uh, children with special needs, especially the uh, physically challenged or the hearing impaired. So it's one thing that indeed government is taking, has taken keen interest in it. And uh, I think in few years down the line, we'll be able to see that uh, uh, to fruition. And then on the issue of um, the funding, uh, it was brought out that the, uh, the aspect of ECE, uh, I may not speak on behalf of Lufuanyama because I'm coming from uh, Kitwe Deb's office. And uh, I can uh, proudly boast that I think as Kitwe, we've done so well uh, in as far as creating uh, ECE centers, that is early childhood education uh, spaces for our, our little ones. And we have about... Uh, 46 uh, centers in all our, our public schools where you can be able to access uh, ECE uh, education for, for our learners. And also we've gone a step ahead to uh, ensure that those who dropped off or those who had no opportunity to get back into school, the key to I think is uh, topping uh, in bringing on board the youth and also the adult uh, uh, adults who wish to get back to, to school. And we have quite a number of uh, centers that are dotted uh, in our schools. I would give an example of Sakili, where Pauline is coming from, where we have youth and adult literacy very active. And uh, in total, we should have about over 400 something who are accessing adult uh, literacy. So Kito is a game changer in line with the education uh, trend setting that is happening. Let's now talk more on health. And Madiana, you are part of the team that got involved in the budget tracking and analysis. What were your key findings when it comes to health? Okay, so first and foremost, I'd like to commend the government of the day, which is led by His Excellency the President, Dr. Edika Chagwalungu. And according to the Community Health Service, it was really, he really implemented it whereas in our community coming from Lufanyama, which is quite a very vast district, he implemented it whereas each and every community has got a community health service. So meaning, well, so meaning the people that can access the health facility in the same community, not walking, not even going far distances, such as 48 kilometers from Kapilamika to go to, what do you call this place? To go to Funda. Thank you. Piscovia, you also come from Lufanyama, and uh, Majan has given us uh, some of the highlights that have taken place in the health sector in that district. Your views? Okay, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to start thanking the government for giving us the hospital and the main hospital, which is in Inkana, in Lufanyama. But still, the, the, we, we have the health centers in all the district, but still the challenge is that we found that some health centers are operating without power. So that's the challenge that we have. And again, in Lufuanyama, you know, it is a vast district, and we only have one ambulance which caters for all the district. So it is difficult for someone, maybe uh, two people are seeking different health centers to be uh, allocated with the ambulance. Issues of transportation, and that's an ambulance, You've also spoken about electricity, energy, very key when it comes to running health institutions. Alex, your take. Uh, just to add on what my colleagues have said, um, 
due to lack of uh, allocation of funds, uh, Lufanyama dis uh, district is facing a lot of challenges uh, in the health sector, such as uh, the Inkana health sector. Uh, I quote from one of the healthy workers, she said that uh, uh, this year or this month they were given about 2,000. Uh, whilst uh, most of that money goes to the power, and uh, but the normal amount of money that they need is 5,000. Okay. Um, Pauline, you come from Kitwe. What were your findings? These three are from Lufuanyama. You are a Kitwe person. What is happening in the health sector according to the budget tracking and analysis that was done? Okay, so first, uh, first sorry, we all need to know that for everyone to live, we all need to be healthy. So even for children to live and grow, we need to be healthy. So one problem or one challenge that Kitwe is observing is that we do not have a children's hospital. So the whole Copper Belt province only has one uh, child hospital, which when we look at the population of children, uh, the population is very, very large. So we would like and we would love it if the government would build more children hospital here in the Copper Belt province. Mr. Sikwese, again, the children are speaking out on some of the key findings, and she was referring to one hospital for children, and that's the Arthur Davidson Children's Hospital in Indola. Your take. Okay. Uh, it gives me an, uh, it leaves me in an awkward position to comment, especially that uh, it's concerns with the health uh, sector. But uh, one thing I would say uh, is that I think we've seen quite a number of uh, uh, projects coming in. We've seen a number of uh, health facilities opening up. We've seen the one-stop centers coming up. Uh, an indication that I think the government has prioritized uh, health. And the, uh, from, like, when we look at Kitwe, we had one stop center in Buchi. Now we have uh, an, another opening in, in Indeke. And then the aspect of having a, a child's hospital, I think uh, we, we look forward to that. I'm sure uh, the health uh, personnel and the, 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 the ministry, the, the, our government, uh, will be able to, to address that. I definitely to look forward to it. The children have spoken. So definitely we'll be able to, 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 to the, the information has already been sent. So we, we look forward to having that. We look forward to having that indeed. Madiana, as we conclude this program, I want you to give us your recommendations to the government according to what transpired. You undertook the, you are part of the people that were doing the budget tracking and analysis. Your recommendations, you can also marry it with uh, social protection. Yeah, okay. So one thing that is really clicking on into my mind is that the government of the day has really prioritized, um, the, which is social protection. Whereas girls who dropped out of school have been taken back to school, which we really, really thank the government for. And whereas when it comes to our mothers, who really had nothing to do, but the government gave them another chance for them to go into businesses and do their best, which they are doing. And that we really, really, really thank. And one recommendation that I would really want to make is that the government should really prioritize the rural areas, whereas they don't really have that enjoyment to full facilities. And based on our organization, it really talks about having a just Zambian society, whereas each and every individual enjoys, their, enjoys the fullness of life. So that's the best thing that we could really need, whereas the government starts prioritizing rural areas such as Lupanyama, where has when it comes to health facilities and education. Please go your recommendations. Okay. First of all, I would like just to add on what my colleague has said on uh, social protection. We thank you, the government of the day, to giving us this opportunity of going back to school uh, because I'm one of them on that program, which is the Keeping Girls in School. I'm one of them. Uh, thank you very much for the government, what it is doing. And also the support that they have given uh, uh, our mothers, which is the Women Empowerment 
uh, they are really able to do something in their lives. Um, one thing that I would do, recommend for the government is to invest more in the key sectors that support the well-being of the children, which is healthy education and social protection, so that we can be enjoying life as children. Thank Alex, you. your recommendations? Um, okay, just to add on what Prishkopia said, um, we are happy that some of the programs are uh, really working well and the allocation reached them safely and they are able to use those allocations. Mm -hmm. uh, and my proposal to, go to the government is that uh, the government should at least build us some reaction facilities where we can at least uh, socialize with people and also uh, relax. Pauline, as we come to the close of th this program, your views, uh, what is it that you'd like to recommend to government after what happened? Okay, thank you so much. Um, okay, so first of all on social protection. Uh, it would be so amazing if the government would spend more money on these uh, three sectors that we have talked about. Because uh, once like the national budget, when we look at it, the way it, ha uh, the way it appears is not the way uh, things are implemented. So it would be so amazing if the way the budget appears is the way things are being implemented. And apart from that, my recommendation to the government is that uh, we should um, see the children's hospital very soon. We are looking towards it. Thank you so much. These have been my guests on this special program, which we dedicated to the children to share their key findings according to what happened. They did conduct a budget analysis and tracking from me, Andrew Bazima, and the entire production team, it's goodbye.